In this movie, I'll be demonstrating how to create a herringbone brick pattern using InDesign and Illustrator. First, we're going to start in InDesign. And this is the original pattern that I wanted to kind of replicate. And it was originally laid on the ground in a, a diagonal pattern, but for our purposes, it's going to be easier for us to recreate this if it is uh, horizontal and vertical. So you, I'm going to rotate my, my sample image a little bit so I can get a, a better idea of how the horizontal and vertical bricks fit together. And I'm going to be starting out by making an InDesign table. And the great thing about InDesign tables for creating geometric uh, color block type patterns is that it's a forced grid structure. The the squares and rectangles have to fit together a certain way. There can't be any overlap when creating them using a table. And uh, that's the that's the rigidity that I'm that I'm looking for. So I'm going to insert a table. I want nine rows and 12 columns. I could make it smaller, but by having a, a larger number of uh, bricks to work with or cells to work with, it'll let me kind of sprinkle in different colors into the design and so that I can get more of that that natural um, brick pattern that I'm after. It won't just be, uh, I won't just be stuck with one color. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to make all of these these cells square. You'll notice that the the bricks have got a two by one ratio, two wide by one high. And so by making all of these cells square, I can then merge some cells together and it'll automatically give me that two by one ratio. So I'm going to change in the control panel uh, the cell height and width. All of them are going to be 12 points. And now I can start merging my cells. I'm going to bring this one over. This is uh, one I did earlier and it's, um, it's one I'm going to be copying. So I've already set up this with a keyboard shortcut. So it's going to go pretty fast. But if you don't have a keyboard shortcut, you can you get to the merge cells under the um, contextual menu, right click and then merge cells. I find it's it's easier to go um, diagonally through you know in one direction and then diagonally um, in the other direction and and so on and so forth. That way it's a lot harder to miss cells. And, uh, and, you know, not merge them correctly. So I think I've got all these uh, colored correctly. So what we're going to do now is um, add a little color to them. And while I could go in and edit the default InDesign colors to try to come up with some brick colors, I really don't want to. There's an easier way. In Illustrator, it's got a whole bunch of color swatches already built in for a whole bunch of different colorways and color palettes. So I'm going to show you how to find those. I'm going to create a new document. So this is what this is the default swatch set built into Illustrator and I don't want any of those so I'm just gonna clean those up right now. Yes I want to delete all the extra stuff. So now my swatches panel is nice and clean. Um, so I'm gonna go to Window, Swatch Libraries and in here there's a whole bunch of uh, interesting swatch panels, color books, um, color ways. So I'll use this sometimes as a source of inf inspiration. Um, like now, I need stone and brick colors. And what's really cool about this is that these are already um, built into color groups. They're already made of swatches, which is wonderful. But if I want to find some other variety, I don't need to go digging through the menus again. I can just click this little button right here, Load Next Swatch Library. And so it's going to go through the all the different built-in Illustrator swatch libraries um, just with, you know, one or two clicks. 
but I know that I want the stone and brick colors so I'm gonna select all those and add to swatches. So they're in here but how do I get them into Illustrator or into InDesign? I could just draw it a square and then color it and copy and paste it. If you just need you know one or two swatches that's kind of an, an easier way to go. Um, and when you paste it it'll automatically show up in InDesign right here. But if I have you know 50 different swatches that I'm working with I don't want to have to do that 50 times. So an easier way is to export this whole thing as an ASE file. And an ASE file is a Adobe Swatch Exchange file and it's a, a set of color swatches that are inter interchangeable between Illustrator, InDesign, Photoshop and probably a number of other Adobe applications. So I'm just going to stick that right on the desktop. Now in InDesign I don't want all this pink and yellow and, and green to clutter up all my nice color choices of brick. So I'm going to go select all unused and just trash those. And then go back to the flyout menu and click load swatches. And all of those color swatches that were in Illustrator are now in InDesign. And Another reason I love working in InDesign for doing colorizing work is because all of these are global swatches. So if I uh, if I apply some swatches to my uh, my artwork and then I go in and adjust the swatch definition and you know I tweak the CMYK values, my artwork colors will automatically be updated. In Illustrator, there's a second step that you have to go to uh, go through in order to make your swatches. A a global color swatch. So I, I really like the um, in InDesign how these are all by default global swatches. So I need to start colorizing this. I could you know drag and drop individual colors onto every single cell. That's kind of a pain for you know what I'm doing right now. Most of the most of the bricks are going to be all the same color. So if you hover over the left corner of your table it'll select them all. And so now I can just choose a brick color that I think is nice and they'll all instantly be colored. And now I can just drag and drop the colors onto the cells wherever I want it. Now something to note about um, dragging and dropping color cells is that our color swatches, if you hover over a table cell, it's gonna, your pointer or your cursor is gonna change um, depending on where you're hovering. So if I, uh, if I want a, a dark red swatch and I hover over a cell, there's going to be a small black square underneath my cursor. But if I hover over a stroke, the cursor changes. Um, it, it's a beach ball right now, but um, it's, it'll change into like a little slash symbol. See that? And so you can easily drag and drop color just onto the, uh, the strokes or the fill that you want. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, but I'm going to go back and forth between InDesign and Illustrator just starting with this and to show you why I need to set up the table in a certain way in order for it to work correctly in Illustrator. So I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to go to Illustrator and I'm going to paste it. Object, Pattern, Make. And you'd think this looks this looks pretty good. The borders, you know, in between are a little thick. But the thing I'm concerned about right now is that most of my my rectangles are, or most of the bricks are rectangles, but sometimes on the edges here where they should be rectangles, they're, they're squares and they're just, it's not lining up correctly. So we need to go back to InDesign and, and fix that. Basically what we need is a key going into a keyhole so that when we make a pattern in Illustrator, um, all the, the, the bottom part of this will fit into the top part up here. And uh, so that's what we're going to do next. Just going to start removing the fill and the stroke 
of selected cells. And we don't need a stroke down here, so I'm going to take that off. And same thing with this uh, no fill there. And we don't need the bottom stroke or the, um, the stroke of the in between the cells. This one doesn't need a fill. And it doesn't need those corner strokes. This one I'm going to remove the top stroke and the fill. And now that this one is the way I want, I can just copy it and paste it over here. Now the next thing we need to consider is that, well, this, these, you know, the top and the bottom are sort of like a key into a keyhole. Oops, I missed one. On the sides, we're going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to make our pattern so that the sides can kind of butt up next to each other, but we uh, we don't want to have squares. Uh, we want this rectangle right here to blend seamlessly into this rectangle. So in order to do that, we need to not just remove this black stroke right here, but we actually need to change it to the same color as the brick. And so this is a 10, 66, 69, 10. What we can do is just grab that swatch, mouse over um, the stroke right there, and it should work. It didn't. I dropped it on the wrong place. Let's try that again. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing right over here onto that stroke. Now that I have these, these side cells set up the way I want, I can just copy and paste them. It looks pretty good. Now in theory, this should work when I take it in Illustrator. Let's see. So I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go over to Illustrator. I'm going to delete the old one, paste, and then go to Object, Pattern, Make. Now you'll notice there's a bunch of white space in here. That's because this, like I said, is a key fitting into a keyhole. And so we need to tighten up the vertical spacing there. And we need to choose uh, size tile to art, and that's going to open up these fields here. We can do a negative 12 point spacing because if you'll remember, 12 point is the uh, the cell width and height. But then there's some extra white space in here, and that's because um, there's a an one point white or one point black stroke. So if we um, if we change that to a 13 point vertical offset, it should work just fine, and indeed it does. But you'll notice that. Some of the some of the borders don't line up quite right. It's like half of the black stroke is missing, and I honestly don't know what causes that. But I found a workaround. So I found if you select one of the black strokes using the direct select white arrow tool, and then go select same stroke color, and then go to object compound path make. It fixes it. It like kind of sticks all the black strokes as together as one unit. And so we won't have that problem anymore with half of the black stroke disappearing. Now, notice how there's some there's like a double black stroke there and that looks a little bit weird. And again, that's because there's a one point black stroke on this triangle, you know, a budding next to a one point black stroke on on these rectangles. So what we need to do is just decrease that that horizontal spacing to tighten that up so that those those side strokes they'll just sit on top of each other instead of uh, sit next to each other. So in theory if I draw out a new object and I give it a fill of my brick pattern it should work just as I expect. I can expand it as big as the moon and I have a brick pattern.